Hello, we're now entering into a fair few videos focusing on software, and a lot of them are focused on the operating system, which is arguably our most important bit of software. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the purpose of an OS and some of its most common tasks. But let's just talk about software more generally for a second, because the topic is called system software, which we need to understand what that refers to. So software itself can be split into two subcategories, application software, and system software, also called systems software. And it's important to have in our mental model that we are able to further subdivide these categories. And for systems, at least, we can look at this in terms of operating systems. We can also look at this in terms of utilities. And we'll focus on utilities more in future videos. And the line between OSs and utilities blurs a bit because a lot of utilities are built into operating systems nowadays. But for now, this is the kind of setup and the different categories I want you to have in your head. And it's well for us just defining these. So software itself is just a collection of related instructions that can be executed by the CPU. Applications are programs, software, that directly aid the end user. So they are designed to help you as a person. And we're talking about things like word processing and spreadsheet software and image editing software. We'll look at some of these in a future video, but essentially things which, in theory, you don't need a computer to do. Whereas system software are programs which rely on there being a computer. They are only really relevant if you have a computer. So they aid for smooth running of your computer system and they'll also support the running of applications. So these are really important. We need them to have a useful experience. So they do benefit the end user, just arguably not directly. We'll look at utilities further down this playlist, but these perform what you might describe as housekeeping tasks which again support the running of your system. Let's then look at the operating system shortened to OS in a bit more detail then. So the OS is like we say, system software. What it does is it manages the computer hardware and the other software installed. So it's got a really important managerial role here between the hardware and other software. Now we would never use brand names in an exam, but it's important for you as computer scientists are aware of a few different real life examples. There aren't loads because they are incredibly complex bits of software and they need huge development teams to create. But we should know of a few examples just to have in our head. Some are more specialized for different purposes. Each have got pros and cons. And if you switch between them, it would take a bit of getting used to. Although the underlying principles are always pretty much the same. The Penguin is Linux, by the way. Now that's really the definition of OSs. To state the purpose of an OS is not is not that different to that definition really, but I would say there are two key purposes of the operating system. First key purpose is to provide an interface that can be used to access the hardware of the computer. And the second key purpose I would say is to manage the tasks that the hardware completes. Now let's look at a diagram to explain that. The two absolutely essential components in a computer system are the user and the hardware, arguably, Without the user, nothing will get done. And without the hardware, nothing will get done. So they're absolutely critical. And we've got the software sitting between these. So again, here is another mental model for you to hopefully have in your head of, of how a computer system is set up. Now, the operating system is a really, really important bridge between the user, other software, and the hardware. So nothing accesses the hardware without going via the OS. That's what I mean by interface. The word interface is often used but not really defined. It's quite a vague word, to be honest, but an interface is the point at which two different systems meet. So the hardware is one clear system and the software is another clear system. So the OS provides that interface between either the user or other bits of software and the hardware. So if I, as a user, want to open a file, opening a file involves going to secondary storage, I don't do that personally, the OS does that for me. If a program wants to save a file, again, if the program doesn't do it itself, it has to go via the OS. And stuff like opening a file or saving a file or utilizing a CPU, that is managed by the OS. So it's managing the hardware because the hardware doesn't know what to do unless it's instructed by the OS. Now to explain this diagram a little bit more because it is one I've just created, the user can interact directly with the OS often. If I'm signing into my account, that's me interacting directly with the OS. If I'm searching for a folder, that's me interacting directly with the OS. But a lot of the time, I'm interacting directly with Microsoft Word or interacting directly with 
a compression tool and they are interacting with the OS behind the scenes. So you often have layers to this process and it's just a diagram, but I've put system software a little bit closer to the OS and the hardware because it's a bit lower level. It's interacting with stuff and be a little bit further away from what the user is used to doing. Let's end by looking at some of the key tasks which an OS performs. And there are lots of different kind of categories for this given by OCR. And you could come up with some more yourselves, but this is a good list to go from. A lot of these we're going to look at in more detail in future videos. So I'll gloss over for now. It's important that for each of these, we've got an example or two to talk about. So let's start with resource management. Resources are really the hardware. So all of the different hardware components, it's important we make sure they're used efficiently. So they're not being underused. And this will include things like scheduling the processor. Your CPU is your most expensive and most important component. It's important that it's not sat idle. And scheduling is a whole complicated process we'll look at later. And also we've got other random devices plugged into our computer. We need to be able to interact with them somehow and it will use what are called device drivers to do this. Again, we'll come back to that. Lots of OSs provide a hierarchical folder structure where we can have subfolders and we can move stuff around and keep stuff more organized. Even the concept of a folder is not necessary. That's something the OS has provided for us to keep more organized. We're able to name and rename both files and folders. Again, not necessary, but the OS is doing it for us to keep organized. When I want to open or move or save a new file, we have to actually get the storage device to do that. And the OS will do that for us. If I try and save a new file, the OS will handle the communication with my hard drive behind the scenes to make sure it gets saved in the correct place. We also often provide search tools, which allow us to search through terabytes of data relatively quickly. That is no mean feat. Link to files, we often have access controls, which allow us to prevent certain users from accessing certain areas. Of course, behind the scenes, all these files are stored on the same hard drive. However, it can prevent you accessing it if you don't have the correct permissions. We also, in almost every OS, have user authentication, which is really a fancy way of saying usernames and passwords, which enable us to control access further for all of our different files and software. Most OSs keep logs for various different things. A server might keep a ton, whereas a standard computer might only keep some. But a log is just a record of all the different events it's doing or some key events, often timestamped. So you can see when things have happened, when a file got accessed, when a file got deleted. And that's important for what are called audit trails. An audit trail is where you want to go back through and notice where there has been a security event or a mistake or a hardware failure. And having a log means we can spot that and work backwards and investigate. With no logs, it can be hard to know when that file got deleted or when we had that corruption issue. Having a log is useful for security investigations. And linking to utilities, a lot of utilities do relate to security like anti-malware and encryption, but we'll leave that for now. Now, the phrase providing a platform for software to run is a bit confusing. Another confusing statement is what this is really saying is hardware is abstracted away from both the user and also for other software. So the OS will handle all the communication with the hardware and it will provide tools which software can use to access the hardware. These are called system calls. Different OSs will have a list of the system calls they support. And these will be for common tasks like opening files or saving a file or needing to interrupt the CPU. And it provides a standard way of doing this, a bit like how you would call a subroutine. If you call a subroutine, you don't necessarily have to know how the subroutine is working as long as you trust that it's doing what it's doing. In this case, we call the subroutine for saving a file. We don't really care how exactly the OS is going to save it. We just want it to do what it says. So therefore, I've not got to worry about how that's actually being done. And we rarely as software developers have to worry about other software in this process because the OS keeps it really partitioned. It shouldn't matter what other programs are currently open or running because the OS keeps them separate, deals with them individually, handles scheduling. That's not my job to do as a developer. So my life has made it a little bit easier. And the last one we'll look at is providing a user interface. We've got two big types of interface, a CLI, a command line interface, or more commonly a GUI, a graphical user interface. GUI is what you use for most of your programs with buttons and icons, and you've got a cursor and you're able to move stuff around, drag stuff around. That's a GUI. A CLI looks something like this. A command prompt is a program which uses a CLI as opposed to a GUI. You, you interact with it just by typing in commands and pressing enter. Generally, 
a user interface is just providing a way to instruct the computer to do different tasks. The word interface, again, is a boundary between two systems. In this case, it's you as the user and a boundary between you and the computer. And not really a big feature to be able to evaluate these, but there is obviously a purpose of CLIs. The benefit of using a CLI and the reason why command prompt is shipped with Windows, for example, is they can be more concise and direct. You can often in one line of instructions, fit in multiple different commands, which would take multiple steps if you were clicking around. However, clearly GUIs are more usable, especially for people who aren't specialists and don't have loads of command prompt instructions memorized at all times.